and it's only like 11 a.m. But I really wanted to make this video. Hello everybody, my name is Bash Harry and this is The Harry Knit. I hope you're doing well. Happy 2022. I hope you are having a fantastic week, especially with your new goals and all the things here on The Harry Knit. We talk about craft, we talk about knitting, crochet occasionally, I don't know. Uh, and I want to say thank you guys so much for subscribing. I honestly cannot believe that we hit 100 subscribers like yesterday. So ah, <laughs> it feels good and it feels amazing and I'm so grateful that you're subscribed. If you're not, please subscribe, that would be great. Uh, but yeah, this is the second episode of the Harry Knit Podcast. I'll be talking about my finished objects, my works in progress. I would usually do a yarn haul, but I think I'll make one for next week because honestly, there's a lot of yarn that I purchased uh, this month and last month that just arrived. So I'll talk about that in a future video, probably next week. Uh, but I'm also going to be talking about my plans for 2022, the makes, and a little bit of a knitting supplies haul. Yeah, I guess we're gonna get started. For finished objects for December, I honestly do not have any. And let me explain, I was really busy with work the past month in December. There was just an overwhelming amount of things to film and record not for this channel or my other channel, it's just simply pure work that I had to do. But thankfully now I think I could focus on getting back into my hobbies and relaxing. I did, however, finish a scrunchie set for Christmas someone commissioned. It's this one right here. They asked for a Little Mermaid inspired scrunchie set. So that's what I made. I made a red one, a yellow one and a purplish one. So the red one is Ariel, yellow is Flounder, purple is Ursula. And I designed my own pattern for it. So each of them have a different pattern. With Ariel, we wanted to do waves kind of for her hair and then a little bit of green for her tail. With Flounder, I noticed he had stripes. So I did a speckle design on his scrunchie. And for Ursula, because she's half octopus, I did this very like triangular spotted design kind of like almost a semblance to an octopus so yeah that was my finished object for that was actually my last finished object of 2022 which feels so strange for me to think about now because i did not realize it until now but yeah it was my last project of 2022 and it wasn't for me, it was for them. So I'm at least really happy that I could make that up for a Christmas gift. And it's super unique as a scrunchie. I don't usually make patterns, but if you are somebody who likes to play with intarsia and color work, but don't really wanna invest too much time on a sweater, I think a scrunchie is really great to practice on. And I might do more of that in the future if I do decide to scales, to sell sets. What is my mouth doing today? I, I don't know, but I might do more intarsia pieces in the future if I decide to make more scrunchies. That is the only finished object that I made last year or like last December. I wanna move on to my works in progress right now because honestly, there is a lot, but the one that I'm focusing on right now, let me just get it. This is my very first test knit ever. So I'm test knitting a pattern from the amazing Lily Kate Makes, who I actually knew for a very long time. We were blogging buddies back in the day when we were like in our teens. And she's a fantastic knitter designer now. And so I'm testing her pattern, which isn't out yet from this video, when up, this video is uploaded and it is the Thin Air Sweater. I was posting about it on my knitting goals 2022 video and this is what it looks like so far. Can I get a close up? So it's very white. Oh, zoom in. Okay, it doesn't want to zoom in. So this is what it looks like. I finish the body and the neckband. I'm now doing the first sleeve and I'm almost done. There's just a few more decreases I have to do. Um, before I finish the sleeve and I have to change it to a different yarn 
in the pattern. I don't know if I can show you a picture, but it is very beautiful and it's going to be my first time trying out like, um, what do you call it? Like a, it's not duplicate stitch. It's kind of like, um, reversible. Yeah, it's reversible. So it's much thicker. It's much heavier. And I'll probably be using my Sheep Jess Katona yarn for that because it matches and it's like it's mercenized cotton so it will look really nice against this it is the wendy yarns peter pan dk weight i think it is nylon acrylic blend so it is yes it is plastic but it was the only thing that i had available and i now am more aware that i need to focus on knowing what yarn and fiber i like but this one's ultimately very thick and cozy a part of me wishes I didn't choose white because I'm so worried this is gonna get easily stained. And it might be. I might actually be using this yarn to hand dye my own skeins one of these days. But this is what it looks like. I'm hoping to get this done by end of this week. So this afternoon, I'm probably going to just power through, finish the sleeve off, have it done, move on to the other sleeve and finish it by the end of this week because it is a Wednesday and I want to finish it by Sunday so I can block it. I might as well like kill the acrylic so it's a bit more smoother and a lot drapier. Like I do that a lot of my acrylics that I like to kill it just for the drape. I'm someone who personally likes a lot of drape in the fabric. It makes it feel a lot more, well one it makes it feel a lot more better on the skin especially if it's acrylic and I just like the way it looks. I like the shininess that acrylic gives, even though I'm trying right now to avoid using acrylics. But if I am, I want to kill the acrylic, so to speak. But I'm almost done and I cannot wait. This has a deep V, so even if I do wear it out, I'll probably have to wear like a tank top underneath just in case. Oh, I think this requires like minimum three to four balls of yarn because this is the third ball and it's not enough. I'm hoping this is enough for the sleeve but I don't think so. We shall see when we can. Another work in progress that I want to talk about that I actually frogged last month is another test knit that I'm doing for a YouTuber here, Phoebe from Friday Knits. She made this beautiful top and she calls it the Daphne top very reformation vibes going on so beautiful so perfect but uh i was supposed to do a test knit for it and i am still doing the test knit for it but unfortunately the yarn that i was using was a sport not dk so even though i did get gauge for it it was 22 stitches it unfortunately was still too thin of a yarn so I had to frog it because I realized if I did sport instead of DK, like the original pattern, it was going to be too sheer and I wasn't going to be able to wear it out. It was also going to be too tight on my needles. And I didn't want that for my, like my own personal preference for clothes. So I frogged it and then I bought more yarn for it. So I don't know if I can talk to you. I, yeah, I'll probably talk about it. So I'm using very briefly i'll talk about it more next week with the yarn haul thing but i'm probably going to be using the drops merino extra fine it's this one come on come on this is the baby no this is the drops merino extra fine in the color powder pink it's so beautiful and I do love working with merino for the weather that we have here. It is wool but it's very cooling on the skin. I have a merino, I have a lot of merino wool. I have also a lot of regular wool <laughs> and you can be damn sure which one I use more often. So I'm hoping I get to use this one. And that is for the Daphne top which I really really want to finish. And the pattern release or when we're supposed to finish it is going to be about to February so hopefully I have enough time to knit up a swatch finish the sweater and then start on the top I'm so excited to start on it it looks absolutely beautiful I just wish I had the right yarn to use and we were talking about it she recommended that merino was the best so I bought merino just in case I did have some extra yarn 
just in case it didn't work out, but also because I just I wanted it in my collection, <laughs> in my yarn stash, so to speak. Another thing that I am test knitting, I don't know if I can talk about it, but by the time this video is up, I'll probably be starting it. It is Ronti Visuals, Ronti Visuals on Instagram. She made the Orbital Jumper. It is so beautiful. It is so unique. It's not like a jumper that I've ever seen before because it uses like DK and um, silk mohair in this really beautiful design. And it's so unique. And I'm test knitting that for her as well. I'm just waiting for her response. And I'm hoping to use some of my yarns that I got locally which would be absolutely wonderful. I want to make something with um, hand-dyed yarns that I bought in Brunei. That is something that I am very excited to start on. Another thing that I am making, which I purchased the pattern, um, I purchased the yarn for it. It is the Alexandra Dress by Steffi Habakran, also known as FBE Studio, I think. And it's the Alexandra Dress. And I've never knitted a dress before. I've knitted a cardigan, I've knitted a sweater. I've knitted a lot of tops, but I've never actually made a dress. So the one that I'm using is, let me see if I can get it. It is going to be using the Funfetti cake that I got from Kite Khan, and I did a swatch on it. It looks beautiful. The gauge is a little off because this, surprisingly, they said it was DK or lightly worsted. I think this is more of an Aran, Aran weight wool. Or cotton um, because yeah it is just kind of thick but the cotton is still really pretty it swatches really beautifully I can't wait to make this it's called funfetti and it does look very fun to knit up so me and my sister my sister bought the pattern she bought half the yarn I bought half the yarn so it's a dress that we can both wear and I'm very excited because it's beautiful I also got buttons for it I got buttons for that yarn for the dress but a part of me thinks those buttons are too small because I, I might want bigger buttons just for the look of it. It's very cottage core. So those, I guess, are the works in progress or things I'm just going to start this month because when I'm filming, it is uh, the 5th of January. So hopefully by the end of January, when I make the next podcast episode, I'll have all of it sorted. But we shall see. Please, Bash, let me know. Thanks. Enough talking about works in progress. Let's do the knitting haul real quickly. I say knit haul. It's not the yarn haul. I'll do that for the next video, as I said. There are stuff that I purchased as knitting supplies here in Brunei and as well as the wool warehouse because, you know, when it comes to knitting, it's not just yarn. It's also the needles. It is the tools that you need. And I am somebody who wants to invest very slowly on the items that I need at the time I need them. So this one, this was a very, I thought about it. I was like, do I really want one? And then I bought it. So it's a yarn bowl. It is the cutest thing ever. I've never had a yarn bowl. This is my very first yarn bowl ever. And like, if you're not a knitter or a crafter, you might not know or understand why you might need a yarn bowl. But to be honest, this has been such a lifesaver because I would usually just put my knits in a bag, pull it, that's it. But ever since I got a yarn bowl and I would just put it on the table or the couch while I'm knitting beside me, it has been so helpful and so easy. And my mom even enjoys it. She wants one for herself. She might just steal mine, to be honest. I'm kidding, obviously, probably not. So I'm probably going to start using this more often. I got it for $18 at Hoko, but I know that there was one that was available for $32 with a cover on it, with a lid. I didn't really want it. A lot of my yarn is pretty thick, so this was fine for me. And I know that this is a good investment in the long run, especially as a knitter. Plus, very aesthetic. Another thing that I purchased, not from Hoko, but from Wool Warehouse, are interchangeable short needles. These are the Knit Pro Symphony short needles. So I got them in 5, 4, and 3.5. I'm not like huge on big needles. I'm somebody who does a lot of small-ish needle projects. So my go-to is usually 3.5, which is very small. Um, but I do 
make tops that are like requiring four millimeters or five millimeters. And I realized that it would be beneficial to have the shorter needles, especially when I'm making projects like hats or scrunchies or even sleeves, because those require like a circular needle that actually fits. And so that's why I purchased them. They're purely for my 40 centimeter needles. I'll say this though, you can buy a set, but I already have size 3.5, 3, 4, 4.5, 5, and 6. And I have the long um, cables that I got from Hoko and I thought, you know what, it's just better if I make an investment on it and just slowly build up the pieces when the year comes. If I get a set of interchangeable needles, that would be amazing. I would love it so much, but you know, it's, it's, a, it's a dream. I want to talk really quickly about my plans for 2022. I know that a lot of people are thinking about their goals. For me, I want to knit 22 projects for 2022, um, which for me feels something that is achievable. And I want to make sure that I use up what I can in my stash because it is growing. It is growing very quickly. I even get a shelf for it. So I want to be more mindful though about what I make. So within those 22 projects, it has to be things that I know I will actually wear or the person that, is, that I'm making it for will actually wear. Uh, just because I'm thinking back into all the projects that I want to make. I think I want to think critically, is it something that I can access in my wardrobe? Is it something that I could wear on a regular basis? Because I think about it and it's like, I cannot realistically make a lot of sweaters for somebody who lives in Southeast Asia, where the coldest it will be is 25 degrees. Um, so. 25 degrees Celsius. So for me, I want to focus on making tops. And even if I do make something long sleeve, it has to be something that I know has a lot of drape, has a lot of ease and won't get too hot during the summer. That being said, I also have to think about, you know, making a sweater or two. I do want to have that kind of skill set and try to practice. I also want to start learning how to make my own patterns, which would be really cool. It's something that I've been thinking about, but I don't know where to start. So if you have any YouTube video ideas or recommendations, please let me know. I would love to watch them. But yeah, and speaking of being more mindful about what I want to wear, I want to talk really briefly about my antiquity blouse and I'll show it here. Oh. I talked about it last month during my first episode of this podcast. It's by Fable Knitwear and it is very beautiful. However, I'm thinking about being more mindful with my knitting and ultimately I think I am going to frog it. Not for the reasons you might think. So I love the pattern. It looks absolutely beautiful, but I think what I did with choosing the yarn, choosing what I was making, ultimately wasn't going to be something that I would wear out regularly. So I did a mix of Sheep Just Katona in blue. Yes, blue. And then the sleeves are drop silk mohair. And I actually combined the two yarns together, which ultimately wasn't good because the cotton stretches, it has no, it doesn't have any stretch. So and I did it in a size S because that's what I thought would fit my bust. But I have to remember that cotton doesn't have that stretch. So it's going to be very big on me. And it is really big on me. And it's itchy because of the silk mohair and the cotton together. It wasn't going to work out the way I wanted. And I'm really disappointed in that. But ultimately, I am going to have to frog it and try again. Maybe in the later half of February if I don't have a lot of patterns to think about because I have like the So Summer shirt, I have the Love Witch sweater, and I have the Antiquity blouse. I bought the patterns but I haven't made anything from them yet. So I think, ooh, lots of dust, lots of fuzz. 
So I think that is the plan with the antiquity blouse. I'm really sad about it because, you know, I love the pattern. It's very beautiful. It's just not something that I can do right now. I don't know if I will uh, get new yarn for it. I might just start you looking from my stash or I am going to use the Rowan Fine Lace and Double Strand it because it is a very nice lace. I have a few feelings of guilt when it comes to frogging patterns and like especially one that I've been doing for a long time. I've been doing that antiquity blouse for two months now and realizing that I just wasn't going to enjoy it the way that I was supposed to feels absolutely terrible. So I'm going to recreate it. I'm going to redo it. I think that's one of my makes for 2022. But yeah, I think it's un it's okay to feel guilty about, you know, not being able to finish a project. I don't want to force myself to finish it and then end up not wearing it ever. So I'd rather just pull it apart now and then try it all again. Another thing that I'm planning on making this year is hats for kids. So I am working with a few crafters here in Brunei. We are making hats for kids who are currently undergoing chemo. So I will be making some beanies for them. I think I'll be making three or four. I'm using this yarn from my mom's stash and it is the Hayfield bonus DK extra value. It's from my mom and we're going to be making some hats. Hopefully I'll be able to make a little tutorial on how to make some hats because when I was first starting out with knitting, and this was definitely a personal thing, but I was obsessed with knitting hats to the point where my Ravelry for a long time was just hats. And I look at these photos and I'm like, wow. But yeah, I'm probably going to make some beanies and hopefully make a tutorial out of them. I've made one hat for myself and it was a recreation of the Darcy hat from Thor, from the first Thor movie because I was obsessed with Kat Dennings and her personality. That is the plan. I'm also probably going to make new videos on like tutorial based I guess like how to make a hat, how to make a vest because I really want to make a vest and a cardigan. I have an idea for a cardigan. I just need to figure out the time when to make it because like I said I don't have that many thick needles. I have to think about like levels of video, how much can I reasonably make within a month or two. So a lot of thoughts, a lot of things, a lot of interesting things that we're planning out for the year because we should. <laughs> I know I like talking about knitting and you know there's not a lot of knitters that I know here in Brunei so it's nice to be able to sit down and chat with you and talk about all the good crafty things that I want to so thank you for being here I really appreciate it. I think that is about it. I'm going to end this podcast. It's a very quick podcast. It's a very short podcast, but that's okay. We will have more to talk about in the next few weeks. I have a lot of videos planned and I'm very excited. If you like this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what are your plans for knits. And I will see you soon. I'll see you next week on Monday. Yes. <laughs> okay. Bye.